Wow, Lord Alimony the second is so damn cool. This guy is so sick. Wow, Grace is so damn cute. Wow. Hmm, you know what? I like Lord Alimony the second a lot, and he is such a sick character. I'm gonna do an episode on him this week. You think I actually have a list of well thought out video ideas that I have carefully calculated and constructed so the order upload flow nicely? Yeah, you have too much expectation on me. I make video on whatever topic I feel Bruh. like. I'm hero irresponsible. So without further on Taku, let's begin today's video on Raver Velvet Character Breakdown. And now, hit my intro fun. Raven Velvet is born on the 3rd of October and he is Polish. More specifically, he is from England. Repping the squad. He is the third generation of the Velvet family. Normally, generations of good magecraft would yield a lot of money and magic wisdom. As a result, their children would have a lot of resources and innate ability to work with. Sadly, that's not the case for Raver. His granddad, the first generation of the Velvet family, he only picked up basic magecraft and the second generation, his mother, she doesn't like magecraft and she only practices it occasionally to honor her mother. As a result, the third generation favor is at a serious disadvantage when it comes to pursuit of magecraft due to the lack of resources, wisdom and innate talent. And unfortunately, he's the first ever one in his family to seriously pursue it as he is deeply intrigued by the mysterious nature of Magecraft. As a result, when both of his parents passed away due to illness, he decided to sell all of his family's possession and gather enough money for tuition to study in the clock tower, a place where the oldest, strongest and most influential mage gather and it is broken down into many departments and it is ruled by the 12 really powerful and wise lords. The clock tower is located at the British Museum and it is built on top of the spirit grave Avalon the corpse of a mountain-sized dragon and it is the main source of energy for Magus and home of many mythical beasts. Within the clock tower, there is a classroom by Lord Kenneth L. Melanie Alcabo and he taught the spiritual evocation subject. Speaking of Lord Kenneth, he is a really interesting character. He is extremely wealthy and he has inherited a rich ancient nine generations of lineage. He was an absolute genius ever since he was a student and he became the youngest lecturer in the department of evocation and he is on scheduled to become one of the strongest forces within the clock tower. Essentially, he is a winner in life with a permanent hair rifle in solar. He is a really important character that we will discuss later on on this episode. His personality can be summarized as a dipshit who has felt entitled to everything since birth and he is a really arrogant and selfish individual. Now, going back to our main character of the show, Raven Velvet, he has attended K9's lesson and he was a student there. At the age of 19, he handed his professor under the great Emperor of Greek, the King of Conqueror, a legendary warrior that conquests every land he has set a foot on. Except India though. Iskander is a huge handyman who is noble and loud. Basically, he's the complete opposite to his master, Vaver. Hence, they argue a lot. As the war progresses, Vaver starts to respect and recognize Iskander as the great king himself, and Iskander starts to acknowledge Vaver's unconventional yet useful mage skill as the master, and those two slowly but surely bonding together after a range of life-threatening battles, and they became the best partner that Fortressy used in BL Dojo's in manga. Their adventure in Fate Zero has completely captivated me and it became my favorite pair of master and servant. 
With the departure of King Iskander, Waver's life was spared by servant Gilgamesh, one of the earliest emperors ever recorded in human literature, and he is the king of heroes. Gilgamesh spared Waver's life due to the respect and royalty Waver paid to Iskander. <laughs> Three years after the Fourth Holy Grail War, Waver Velvet returns to the clock tower with another large amount of money he borrowed once again from his best friend that he never returned. We all have one of those prick friends, don't we? Am I right, Jimmy? Ha! F you! He used those resources to collect the unorganized and unattended works of Lord Caniff, compiling them into a big ass book named Lord Caniff's Encyclopedia of RK Secrets. He then reopened the Lord Caniff's ex classroom due to his guilt, and he blames himself partially for the death of Lord Caniff in the war. He wants to pay tribute to the classroom that taught him mage and to help the younger generation that love mage, just like who he was. His new school of teaching and easy to understand explanation quickly make his lecture one of the best within the clock tower. His actions restored the El Meloni house and he became known as the man who revived the Archibald or the new El Meloni. His deeds and actions were dismissed by other lords, but there is Reigns, the princess of El Melony who noticed his work. Speaking of Reigns, she is a blonde hair lolly. Rain is a young princess of the El Melony house, and she is the sister of Lord Caniff. She became the head of the family once the death of Caniff was announced. Caniff also left a numerous amount of debt for the El Melanie family to pay, and that obviously landed on Rain's shoulder. And the worst thing is, she is way too young to become a lord for her family, so she needs someone to be the lord until she turned 18. According to the anime, Waver was captured by Rain to investigate her brother's death during the war, and what is the reason behind Waver's action to restore her brother's classroom? Waver broke the bad news to her that Lord Caniff was killed during the war partially due to him summoning the rider's servant that was supposed to be Lord Caniff's. Surprisingly, the young blonde princess didn't shed a single tear nor a moment of sadness. I guess Caniff was a prick to her as well. After finding out the death of Caniff and Waver's action, she remembers some of the problems she's facing right now, and there is a perfect candidate tied up in front of her who can solve it. Waver Velvet, the survivor of the Fourth Holy Grail War. Although he was recognized by many as the most useless formal student of Lord Caniff, but she saw something different inside him. She saw potential inside this man, so she blamed Caniff's death partially on Vaver and used that to make him her servant. Quote, I recognize your deeds to the Archibald family, but since you were only making up for what you caused in the first place, you better serve me for your entire life. As a result, he became the slave of a master lolly. Sound like some dodgy hentai to me? Rain also lists several demands for Waver to fulfill. One is to help her to pay off El Melanie's family debt. Second is to recover Caniff's magic press, a magic circle that is engraved in the body and it contains a circus of magic circuit and knowledge for her family. The third demand is to become Lord Elamin until she turned 18. Finally, her fourth demand was for him to become her personal tutor. Wafer has no choice and he felt guilty, so he agrees to all of them except the third one. He wants to be called Lord Alimony II as a tribute to Lord Caniff, although he hates him personally, but he respects him as a lord and a lecturer of the classroom that taught him knowledge. 
Since that day, he has become Lord Alimony II and he started to restore the name of the house while his lecture on solving extremely difficult cases surrounding the use of rage. Oh, he also picked up a cute apprentice prior to Andra Castle detachment. The apprentice is called Grey, aka a cute grey hair saber. And that's my waifu of the show. Don't you dare lay your hand on her. Waver has changed a lot since he became Lord Alimony II. He becomes more mature, wise, and patient, but we can still see small traits of past Waver, like short temper. Shit! Trust me, guys, he's only like a small amount of the time. And his growth is almost certainly due to the encounter with Great Iskander. And now he has slowly but surely becoming a true follower of Iskander. A brave lord that survived any hardship and spread the tale of Alexander the Great. He was one of those character development that is done right both physically and in personality throughout the franchise. And I really enjoy his growth as a character. Character. Fun fact, the first 6 episodes of the anime Law Alimony II is completely original content. And that's the end of the episode in Vaver Velvet's character breakdown in terms of his background and his role in both Fate Zero and Law Alimony II. I have left out quite a lot of contents throughout the video because I don't want to spoil the plot for both anime too much. I strongly recommend you weeps to go and check out both the anime after the video. There is a lot of interesting information about Waver, like he is an absolute gamer who is obsessed with Japanese games who often he files all pages of critique to Japanese gaming company by mail despite the ridiculously expensive international fee. Also, he was named the number one man female student would like to sleep with in Clock Tower, despite him being a virgin. I'm a virgin. I have used various information online to make this video, one being Type Moon Wiki fandom, and there's simply too much information to put on this video, so I have left the link down below, so feel free to go check it out. Comment down below on who is your favorite character within Lord Alimony's second anime. For me, it has to be my wife, Grey. She's cute as fuck. And comment down below on which anime character I should break down in the future. I might do a video on it one day. I might. I appreciate you guys for watching the video with us. You could be doing anything in the world, but you chose to be here, and I appreciate that. Like, comment, and subscribe because that's going to help us grow together as a community. And I will hopefully see you guys next time. Stay safe, stay blessed, and have a nice day. I am out. Peace! Please help me find